In my hand here I have DJI's latest engineering Marvel, the Mini 3 Pro, a sub 250 gram drone with an almost 1 inch sensor camera, 4K 60 obstacle avoidance. I've got the fancy version here, a controller with the screen. This whole thing is nice, I'm not going to lie, so we've come somewhere pretty special to test this all out. Let's get into it now. Let's run through the facts and figures first, but feel free to follow the timestamp below where we really get into the analysis. In terms of the camera, we have a 1 over 1.3 inch sensor with a 24mm equivalent field of view, fixed aperture f1.7. We'll get into it shortly, but the videos and photos from this camera are superb. In terms of video, we have 8-bit video up to 4K resolution at 60 frames per second with not only a normal colour profile but also a D-Cine-like colour profile. Slow motion of 120 frames per second is offered at a resolution of 1080p. We have 12 megapixel photos as standard but also the option of shooting 48 megapixel photos. Obstacle avoidance gets a huge upgrade when compared with the Mini 2 with the addition of forwards and backwards sensors in addition to the downward facing sensors. Thanks to this we now get intelligent flight modes with the Mini 3 Pro. Focus track which combines active track, spotlight and point of interest is a very welcome addition. A 1080p 30 frames per second live video feed is brought to you courtesy of DJI's O3 transmission system giving a stated range of 12 kilometers. A theoretical flight time of 34 minutes is now possible with the 2453 milliamp battery that comes as standard with the Mini 3 Pro. A pretty cool new feature of the Mini 3 Pro is the ability to buy an extra high capacity battery. 3850 milliamp hours will give you a stated flight time of 47 minutes. Unfortunately the high capacity battery option is not available in the European Union because it takes the theoretical maximum takeoff mass of the drone above 250 grams and that does not please the regulators. Despite its size and weight, the Mini 3 Pro has some decent power under the hood. Top speed of 35.8 miles per hour, 16 meters per second, same as the Mini 2. Photographers and some content creators will appreciate that this is the first drone since the original Mavic Pro to offer a vertical portrait camera orientation. The gimbal can turn 90 degrees on its side, true vertical shooting DJI calls it. Another really nice development is the increased upwards range of motion with the gimbal. We can point this thing up 60 degrees. Now all of the previous drones that came before had an upward range of something like 20 to 30 degrees depending on the drone. This gives us new creative opportunities. It's a really nice development. 1.2 gigabytes of internal storage has been added to the Mini 3 Pro, as has the ability to shoot hyperlapse and master shots. Not only are we being introduced to a new drone, but we have the option of purchasing it with a new controller, the DJI RC, complete with its integrated screen. Now this brings us to DJI's new and very welcome way of packaging and pricing this drone. You can buy the Mini 3 Pro on a standalone basis without a controller. Now you can of course buy the drone with the RCN1 controller, the standard controller if you like, and you can also buy it packaged with the new DJI RC, the lovely controller with the integrated screen. Now in terms of whether this is of interest to you, I don't know your needs, your wants, your budget, your experience, all that kind of stuff, so let's dive into a bit more analysis and hopefully you can figure out if this is the drone for you. Be sure to head down to the description and download yourself a copy of our DJI drone comparison chart. It will really help you decipher all of these specifications. And while you're at it, if you haven't done it already, get yourself a copy of our free ebook from Drone Zero to Drone Hero 37 tips to get you flying like a filmmaker. One concern you might have with the 249 gram drone is the power that it has, the stability, the ease with which you can fly in more challenging situations. In a totally windless scenario, I reached a top speed of 16.3 meters per second, so there is plenty of juice in there to fight the wind. That being said, the wind does have a huge impact on the drone. It disables return to home if it's too strong. It makes it impossible to shoot panoramas. And in this instance, look at the drone speed with the wind behind it, almost 17 meters a second, flying backwards into the wind, however, and it was barely able to move. That was an extreme test, and you can watch it in another video. I would definitely recommend you don't fly in conditions like that. 
I'm not the one to test the range of this drone. I'm not interested in flying 12 kilometers away. What I do want from my O3 transmission, however, is an indestructible signal that isn't interrupted or corrupted by interference or metal objects in the vicinity of the controller or the drone. I do a lot of filming from the car. I don't want to draw attention to myself. So very often I'll just sit in the car hiding, quite frankly, while I fly the drone. As expected, the O3 video transmission between the drone and the controller was superb in this scenario. We get a 1080p 30 frames per second live feed. And in my case, I was using the new DJI RC controller and it didn't let me down once. The 34 minute theoretical flight time did prove to be a touch optimistic. In one test, I started flying with the battery at 88% and landed with it at 20%. That gave me 17 minutes and 40 seconds of flying. So depending on what you're doing with your Mini 3 Pro, I'd expect 20 to 25 minutes flight time. The new forwards and backwards obstacle avoidance sensors definitely got the job done for me on more than one occasion. Here I have the drone following me in active track and those sensors save me from flying the drone into the trees. Do be careful though, there is no sideways detection on the Mini 3 Pro. It will be very possible to crash this drone if you are not careful. I can't emphasize enough how quiet this is. I, I, I absolutely love that. There's nothing to be gained from drawing attention to yourself when you are flying a drone. I also do feel a sense of comfort knowing that this thing is sub 250 grams. Uh, there's no taking liberties with the regulation, shall we say, not registering the drone, all that kind of stuff, which I know in reality, a lot of people probably don't do that with the heavier drones, those regulations. In my opinion, I've become a little bit farcical and hard to follow. Anyway, I'm not going to get into that, but I do have peace of mind and comfort knowing that I'm not doing anything wrong. I'm not even drawing attention to myself. I love the experience of flying with the DJI RC controller. The integrated screen was just so practical and so much fun to use. For me personally, practicality has always been a huge issue. If I'm flying the drone, I'm probably dragging a tripod and a camera and all kinds of other things with me at the same time. Portability and practicality matters. One thing to keep in mind is this is the first time I've had to really think about the battery life of my controller. Normally these controllers last forever, certainly when compared with your drone. Here we visibly see the battery drain away in the controller. That being said, I comfortably got through three drone batteries before I had to think about charging the controller. I really enjoyed the increased range of upward gimbal tilt motion that we get with the Mini 3 Pro. It opens doors to more creative opportunities. Here at the channel, we've always encouraged you to fly low with the camera pointed forwards. We were able to get some really cool tilt down reveals of landscapes. In addition to these dramatic crane type shots where we start with the camera pointed up at the subject and then eventually we point it all the way down, taking full advantage of that range of motion in the gimbal. Sticking with the gimbal, true vertical shooting is a really interesting addition. We can rotate the camera onto its side essentially into portrait aspect ratio. It's definitely a great tool for photography, but it's also obviously clearly aimed at the content creator, social media enthusiasts who have a need and a requirement to post vertical aspect ratio content. The 1.2 gigabyte internal storage is a very valuable addition. Now, I'm not going to lie, it does seem a little bit restrictive or a little bit skimpy only having 1.2 gigabytes. It equates to around two minutes of 4K footage, but it's certainly useful in a pinch. And in this example, I was flying some quick shots. The drone was miles away and I wanted to fly it back, but film while I was flying back, take advantage of that flight path. Didn't want to waste my battery, but my memory card was full. So I used the internal memory to get the drone back get a nice reversing shot and not waste that valuable precious battery life. Like much of the technology in the Mini 3 Pro, DJI's Focus Track is tried and tested technology. We know it's good. 
I was interested to see, however, the implementation in this lighter, less powerful drone because it does require a tremendous amount of control. And one of the obvious concerns of a 249 gram drone is that it's not going to be as stable, especially in windier conditions. The software's tracking capability is fantastic. Once it's locked onto you or your car or your bike, it's locked on. It's really, really impressive. The only thing I did notice is that when the subject is slower moving, let's say you're walking, things can get a little bit jittery. This characteristic is certainly not unique to the Mini 3 Pro. You're asking a lot of the drone to gradually creep forward and follow you and keep you in the frame. Things definitely smoothen out a bit if you're following a faster moving subject like a car. Sticking with intelligent flight modes, we have quick shots, master shots, and hyperlapse. Do stay tuned for more videos on these topics. The only thing I would say is that I would love to see 25 or 24 frames per second in those quick shots and the option of shooting de-cine like. I know these quick shots are intended for beginners, you could say, but they are tremendously useful when you're filming yourself. You don't have someone else to help you and you can get great cinematic, complicated maneuvers without having to show the controller in the frame. So I would just love to have have that extra functionality. The video quality of the 4K footage on this camera is beautiful. It's crisp, but it doesn't have that digitally sharpened feel that you sometimes get with smaller sensor cameras. Zoom in on the shadow areas of your footage and you'll see that it is also a low noise image thanks to the 1 over 1.3 inch sensor with a fixed aperture of f1.7. Now we need some context here. A second ago I was talking about it being a small sensor camera. This is a 249 gram drone. The sensor that DJI have given us is huge for a drone this size. And we also need to talk about this F1.7. This is a new development for DJI's consumer range of drones. It's easy to throw out those specifications, but I want to show you what DJI has achieved here. If we compare the Mini 3 Pro's sensor with the Air 2S's one inch sensor, you'll see it's not a million miles different. The one inch sensor is 1.6 times bigger. Now, if we compare the same Mini 3 Pro sensor with the Mini 2 sensor, you're seeing an upgrade there of 2.6 times, 263% increase in sensor size. This is of course good for low light performance. Bigger sensors are better, but it only tells us half the story because we have a new variable here. We have an f1.7 aperture here. It's a fast lens. It lets in more light to that sensor. To see what that actually means across these different sensor sizes, we have to standardize that aperture by multiplying it by the sensor's crop factor to a full frame equivalent. And you will see that that 1 over 1.3 lens at f1.7 actually gives an equivalent aperture to the Mavic 3 and the Air 2S. That's an incredible performance, especially when you consider that the Mini 3 Pro's f6 full frame equivalent aperture is compared with the Mini 2's f15.6 full frame equivalent aperture. The Mini 3 Pro records video at 8-bit color depth up to 4K resolution. Now much as I am a big fan of the 5.4K 10-bit video footage that you get on an Air 2S, for example, it is a grind to edit on your computer. Scrubbing through that footage looking for the favorites in your clips is not easy. Added to that, you need the very best micro SD card to make sure you don't get any drop frames at the time of capture in the drone itself. Given that 10-bit color depth only has added value in extremely high dynamic range situations, sunrises and sunsets, for example, I would argue that you are not going to miss it and a little bit of investment in your understanding of how to use a camera and film video is far more worthwhile than stressing about 8-bit versus 10-bit. So speaking of that, do check out our premium content in the links below. Moving on to photographs, the 12 megapixel raw photos are, well, fantastic. Epic dynamic range if you shoot raw. You can use a piece of software like Adobe Lightroom or Luminar Neo to recover all that detail in the highlights and the shadows should you wish. If you want even more dynamic range, then use the AEB auto exposure bracketing mode. Shoot three or five different exposures that can then get combined in post into a high dynamic range image. Now again, you only need to do this in high dynamic range situations and for us drone enthusiasts, that's when we're pointing the camera at the sun. 
Personally, I love shooting panoramas. My favorite is the nine photo wide angle option. You can use the Fly app to stitch all those nine photos together and produce a JPEG output. It's pretty good, it does look good, but it's all a little bit distorted, I have to say. If you have the time and inclination, I would take the original raw photos that you can save separately, stitch them together in Lightroom and you get a more natural result. I'm not going to go out my way to test the Mini 3 Pro to destruction, but one concern you might have is if it's so light there's been some compromise made in the structural integrity in the design of this drone. Now if there is, I can't really detect it. It feels great to hold, it feels solid. It's all plastic construction now. The original Mini had little foam inserts in the arms. We don't have any of that now. So personally, I don't really have any huge concerns about the durability of the Mini 3 Pro. So there you have it folks, an incredible drone for the majority of users. Do leave your questions in the comments below and we will see you soon.